Hi, Spring fans. Welcome back to our series looking at GraphQL and Spring for GraphQL 1.0 released and they just announced and just released uh, Spring Boot 2.7 release from May of 2022. In this video, we're going to focus on GraphQL's data-driven routes and look at the fantastic integration made possible with Spring Data and Spring for GraphQL. Spring Data provides an easy way to resolve records by queries and Spring for GraphQL provides this concept of a data fetcher, which we looked at way back in the very beginning of our series when we looked at the GraphQL Java engine. In this episode, we're going to look at some of the ways that Spring Data can provide the data fetchers for parts of your object graph. I think this stuff is in particular super cool because it kind of bl blurs the lines between what an endpoint framework is and what data access uh, framework is. There are some interesting opportunities and possibilities, both in the implementation of the component model as well as the engine itself, as Spring for GraphQL lead Rosslyn Stoyanchev can tell us. Um, one of the unique feature, features of uh, Spring for GraphQL is its integration with uh, Spring Data. Uh, what we've done uh, in this initial release is, is, is basically think about um, the various types of options available in Spring Data um, the rich programming model and to think about how that fits into uh, GraphQL. So a couple of the things that have been identified that are worth mentioning uh, are the query DSL and query by example um, integrations uh, that exist in, in uh, Spring Data. And what that does is it allows you to take a Spring Data repository uh, that's enabled for query DSL or query by example and um, um, pretty much turn the repository um, automatically into a data fetcher um, and have all the features um, in it uh, for taking the input, the GraphQL input and mapping that onto a query with the query DSL technology um, and then using the repository to fetch and return the data, possibly customizing it uh, using projections, interface projections. Um, and likewise, query by example, another technology along the same lines uh, where you prepare uh, the query by, by building an example object. Uh, so that gives you yet another option. And in both of these cases, again, you're starting with Spring Data repositories um, and then they can either be automatically uh, auto-registered against uh, queries that match the return type of, of the repositories. Uh, or you can manually uh, quite easily turn them into data fetchers and register them yourself if you want to do something uh, more specific or more advanced. Um, so, so these are uh, just two examples. Uh, there's one more area uh, where we've plugged in something from Spring Data um, and that's the ability to use a projected payload. Um, essentially that is uh, taking, designing, writing an interface instead of an object uh, to have the GraphQL input mapped onto something that you can then examine uh, versus dealing with an input map. You, you can work with, a, with an interface and, and that's a nice feature of, uh, of uh, Spring Data that we support in, 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 Gra in Spring GraphQL. Okay, so I'm going to hit stop on mine. Fantastic. Spring Data gives you the ability to weave repositories, whether they're normal or query by DSL style, into parts of a GraphQL object graph. GraphQL makes it trivial to weave together data from other network services using, for example, reactive programming, or from your databases, and a client doesn't need to be any more the wiser. Now, let's see how it works in practice. All right, let's dive right into it. We're going to build an example using uh, the Spring Data Integration for Spring GraphQL. Now here we're going to go to start that Spring Data. We're going to just uh, build a new project called GraphQL Data, and uh, we're going to use the Reactive MongoDB support. So Reactive MongoDB. Now this support works for a number of different uh, uh, Spring Data projects, including JPA, Redis, MongoDB, uh, and so on. Um, we're going to be using the Query by DSL support in particular, and that's limited to a smaller subset. But again, the three I just mentioned will also be supported by this, or are already are, I should say, supported by this. We're going to use Spring for GraphQL, we're going to use the um, Reactive Web Support, and of course, 
I think that's it. So we'll add, uh, do we want to add anything else? I don't think we do. I think we're happy here. So good stuff. Let's hit uh, generate. Let's go to pom.xml. And here, all we're doing is we're just going to add some dependencies that we don't have uh, available on the initializer, right? These are pretty easy to um, pretty easy to add yourself. You don't need to worry too much about that, but you got to do it. Uh, so the first one we're going to add is the create DSL MongoDB. Uh, project so it's create DSL Mongo DB com create DSL and uh, we're going to add the version using the version specified in the Spring Boot bomb um, and uh, we want to exclude uh, an unfortunately very old version of the driver okay so Take care here. This is um, uh, this is gonna get you if you if you forget to remove it because it's gonna cause a conflict. So org MongoDB Mongo Java driver. Uh, we also want to add the uh, APT support. So let's do that, um, and we want just APT. Okay, we want the APT support. Um, and that's com query DSL as well. And again, we want the version uh, managed by Spring Boot. And we want this to be scope provided. Okay, so there's that. Good. Okay, so when, now we've got uh, our two query DSL de dependencies. That's about it. That's all you really needed um, uh, to, do the, to do the work. So let's just re-import that. We're also going to need, actually, I, I should take that back. There's also a Maven plugin that we're going to want so that we can use query by DSL. Now, for those of you, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, query by DSL is a, um, a amazing way to do declarative. It's an amazing way to do declarative um, queries based on type generated uh, types. They're code generated types. We're going to also want to add the query DSL Maven plugin. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, create this query by DSL is a way to do query by example based on code generated types that correspond to your entities. And so in order for it to work, we need to plug in the query DSL APT. There's this very convenient plugin we can use called the apt APT Maven plugin. Um, and uh, this just basically runs the APT using our Spring Data processor for MongoDB. Uh, and it generates types that get added to this folder, target generated sources queries. And uh, we can then use that. Okay, so re import that again. All right, first things first, we're going to create an entity of type customer. And except the, uh, whereas normally I use an integer ID because I'm using a SQL database, here, since we're using MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database, uh, it helps us to have a string, a UUID, because it just supports, it's just better for distribution, right? Uh, across a cluster you can get consistent IDs uh, that way more quickly. So it's a MongoDB document. We're going to map it using Spring Data MongoDB, the reactive support in particular. Uh, we want it to be eligible for query by DSL, so we're going to use query entity. And then I'm going to create a repository and it's going to be a customer repository. It's going to extend our old friend uh, reactive CRUD repository. Managing entity of type customer whose primary key is of type string. Now, this time we also want this to implement reactive query DSL predicate executor of type customer. All right. All right, we've got a repository. Now um, we want to uh, make this available. So, what we want to do is instead of us manually creating a controller to expose all the different finder methods that we want. Uh, we're just going to automatically register this. Now we could do this kind of stuff ourselves. We could, as usual, create a uh, runtime wiring configure. And you recall that we learned about this stuff in the very first uh, video in this series, right? So customer repository, repository. 
return new runtime wiring configure, and we're going to <clears throat> get a uh, data fetcher. So we're going to say query by DSL. And by the way, there is also query by example support, right? But we're going to use by DSL, uh, query DSL data fetcher. I'm going to use the builder. That's the repository that we just built. And we want to create a repository, uh, a data fetcher rather for monos, you know, single values, right? So that's a data fetcher that returns a mono of customer, a single a cu single customer. I could also do many, in which case I get a flux. Um, and so I can call this uh, data, and then this is datum, right? So single, there you go. And <clears throat> I want to use the builder. I'll say builder dot type, uh, you know, is is query. And then we get the wiring, and we say wiring dot uh, data fetcher. The field name will be customer, and we use datum. The field name will be customers, and we'll use data. Yeah. Um, so we could do that. We could totally do that. That's just fine. And that lower level mechanism exists exactly for us to be able to do something like that. But this is actually a lot of work. I don't want to have to think about this each time. So instead, we'll take advantage of uh, the automatic registration. All we have to do to enable that is annotate this with at GraphQL repository. And uh, I suppose we also need to initialize some data. So let's just create a bean here, application runner. And we're going to use our custom repository as before. So we'll say, um, you know, when the application starts up, we want to, first of all, delete everything. Then let's just write some people on the spring team. So uh, Jurgen and uh, I, Josh and uh, Joe. But there's also some non-Js, obviously. The good Dr. Sire. Uh, there's Mark. And... Uh, Yushin, Madura, Olga. Okay, so there's but a few. And for each one of those names, I'm going to map the name into a new customer uh, like this. And uh, let's see here. For each name, oops. dot map uh, name new customer so no so no okay so we've got the uh, name and then we're gonna map that so we'll say flat map customer uh, and we'll just save it to the database using a repository that save C okay and uh, what does that give us that gives us that step and then finally we want to get all the data back okay so then we'll say give me all the records back and here uh, well, you know once we have the results we'll just log them out we haven't defined how to get all the records we'll get to that in a second but you get the basic pipeline now yeah and um, <clears throat> we are uh, going to define the query here to take advantage of our new query by DSL uh, superpower okay so we'll say repository to find all we're going to specify a predicate, and the predicate is going to rely on some generated types. So let's just say find all for now, and we'll come back to this. Terminal. Terminal. Maven uh, clean package. Let's see if that works. Okay. Okay, so now if we go back here, can we, we might have to do a refresh and then we might also have to add the target generated sources queries a queue customer type so we want to yeah we want to add that here we'll just say uh, mark directory as sources root queue customer <clears throat> so we're saying find all where the customer dot name starts with J and I want to negate that okay so like Borat I'll say not 
and I'll get the results back, okay? So I'm saying find everything where the name doesn't start with customer, right? There you go. Um, com example. Why doesn't that work? Just import. Do I have two other Q cust How many Q customers could I have? Whatever. Okay, you get the idea, right? So there's this, yeah? Um, and I'm going to run that query. So I'm going to say, write all these records. And you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight names. But three of them start with J. So that's five results that we should get back, right? Is that true? Let's just run that. That's This is the nice power of uh, query by query data set, right? Is you can easily build up these very dynamic type safe queries. Let's just run it and see what it gives us. Yes, there we go. There's our five non-J names. How cool is that? Okay, so now you can see we've got a, a very useful repository. Uh, let's make GraphQL do interesting things with it for us. Um, I'm gonna just plug in Spring Boot here. Okay. Good. Okay, so let's now see if we get what let's see what we get for our efforts. And, and obviously this is a GraphQL project, so you need to define some schema. Um, and uh, we'll do that as normal. We'll go to our uh, source main resources directory. We'll go to our source main resources directory. Create a new directory in here called GraphQL. And create a new schema in here called whatever. And we'll define our root queries. Now this is the extent of our work at this point, right? We're just going to define the queries and our automatically registered data fetcher that knows about our customer types will do the rest. So let's say customer uh, by ID, 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 and that'll give you a customer. Okay. Customers by name, string customer. So now we've got these custom data fetchers for types of data called uh, called customer. Let's define that here as well. And name string. And that's it. We don't have to define how these methods get implemented, these, these fields, because they're already tied to these repositories. These repositories already know how to answer those questions. You've seen Spring Data repositories before. This is nothing new. Restart because I had something running already on the wrong port. Obviously, in order to test this, I need uh, the uh, graphical console. Stop that. Run this. Okay. Localhost graphical. And here we go. So customers. What the ID? Great. Let's get the name. Let's say. There we go. Good. What about customer by ID? Well, ID is equal to uh, this right here. We want the uh, ID and the name. Goody. So there you go. That's working. Customers by ID. Uh, what about customer by name? Customer by name. Name is uh, Josh ID name. And just like that, we get the exact result we want without having to write the custom queries. We don't even have to write the interface methods, right? I, I didn't have to create, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have been that hard, obviously. I could have just done uh, find by name, string name, and then injected that into a controller and then delegated to it. But I didn't even have to do that. That's the point. And it's just all done for me merely by having this repository in the class path. And these are entities, obviously, um, but there's no reason I couldn't then enrich them further still as I would normally, right? I can just create a, uh, let's say another entity type and I can just have, now I can have a controller, uh, add controller, class, profile, controller. And, uh, you know, when somebody, um, wants the data, so the type name here in this case is customer, 
uh, I can return profile data. You know, just like before, I can enrich uh, this. I can say new profile, customer ID, and then I'm gonna go to my schema. And here we'll say profile, profile, yeah. Type profile ID, ID, and that's it, right? So we'll just, we'll just define that. And I'm not gonna define anything special here. I'm just gonna leave that as is. And so this will, end, you know, I'm just returning it from whole cloth here, but obviously this could come from a network call or you could use batch mapping or whatever. I'm just trying to show you that that is also a, a useful strategy. Okay, so now I go here and I say I wanna get the profile. And I say I want ID, and voila. So the ID, of course, is the same, right? Um, refresh that, there you go. Now it doesn't show the error, because there's no more error, there's no more schema issue. Same thing down here, there's my profile, right? So very easy to enrich existing APIs as, as per usual. It's just that now with this very smooth integration out of the box, you can easily build endpoints that get your the, the, the bulk of the aggregate or at least the beginnings of the aggregate from your database. And then you want to enrich it by calling other services. And don't forget about your friend batch mapping here, right? There's a lot of possibilities there to make life even easier. Um, this is great, especially if you're working in a domain-driven design style where you have an aggregate and it's well modeled by a repository. Um, you know, this, this takes it to the point, it makes it so that you can use query, query DSL or, or query by example, by the way. I, I didn't show that here, but basically the same idea. You've got this declarative uh, query mechanism, this type safe query mechanism in, in Spring Data and in Query DSL. If you don't want to do it automatically, if you want to have a little more control, you saw that you can do that this way as well. Obviously, we've only begun to scratch the surface, uh, but I think it's just really compelling how easy it is to get something up and running while still having full control of your data and over your over the view of your data. I didn't even go as far as we could have. Obviously, there's uh, a lot more potential here. Remember, this also works well with Spring Data's concept of projection. So you can actually have queries that return a subset of the fields as a custom type. And um, those are called projections. And they're, they're quite, they're a natural thing to have if you're trying to return just a view of the data, right? And that's very common in GraphQL applications as well. Well, what do you think, Spring fans? We've come a long way. By this point, you should be able to easily build efficient GraphQL services while making short work of data and service integration. We've looked at the fundamentals of the GraphQL Java engine. We looked at the Spring for GraphQL component model and queries in particular. We've looked at optimizations like batch mapping via the underlying data loader. We've looked at mutations and how to do streaming with subscriptions and RSocket in particular. We've looked at the various GraphQL clients that let you work blessedly unaware of the underlying protocols. And we looked at how to then take that knowledge to then validate that our services are doing what they're supposed to do with Spring for Graph GraphQL's rich testing support. We also looked at how to integrate data into our applications at an e even higher level with the Spring Data Project. We looked at how to lock down our services so that we don't end up giving away too much data with Spring Security. And we've only just begun to scratch the surface here. That's the crazy part. But hopefully you have a sense of what's possible and where to begin exploring. Obviously, you begin all of that exploring before you begin the exploring at start.spring.io. I want to thank my special guests and inspirations, Spring for GraphQL lead, Rostin Stoyanchev, and GraphQL Java founder, Andy Mark, without whose time and endless patience and contributions uh, to this effort, uh, the work would not be nearly so complete, fun, satisfying, and uh, uh, informative. I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us on this journey into the great and grand GraphQL uh, world. As always, Spring fans, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.